Guys, welcome back to another episode of the Coach's Corner. It's been a minute since we've done some, some of these. We've been talking a lot about spirituality, emotional, mental well-being, but this is super important and I want to dive into the topic of hormones and how they relate to and affect your, not only your physical results, but also your health internally and externally and why you might be experiencing either a plateau or a holding of body fat when you're working your butt off. Hormones. Hormones play an extremely vital role in not only your mental well-being but your physical results as well. They're the communicators between almost every cell in your body and they're going to commu communicate very specific things. What I've learned so far in my own journey and coaching hundreds of different clients is seeing the trends um, and what the trend really is, is it's a managing of cortisol. Cortisol is probably one of the most commonly experienced or hormones that get out of balance that severely affect our physical results. I see it commonly where people are working their butt off, they're dieting, they're, they're doing all the things right, but lifestyle behaviors are preventing them from making progress in the gym, or worse yet, they're actually backtracking because of this pesky hormone called cortisol. Guys, what we're really doing in the gym and in this, in this fitness journey, it, it's kind of a dance of managing cortisol. I want to outline a few things that raise cortisol, then I want to outline a few things that lower cortisol, help us to lower cortisol, and I want to marry the two to, to allow us the opportunity to see how we need to change course based on where we're at lifestyle-wise and where our cortisol levels are and how we need to really look at this as a fluid approach dynamic approach to fitness, not be so rigid, and, um, and really allow us to make the changes when necessary. So, things that raise cortisol. Caffeine, working out, believe it or not, exercise raises your cortisol. Um, lack of sleep raises your cortisol. Stress, like mental stress, our thoughts can raise our cortisol. Um, feelings can raise our cortisol if you're particularly uh, uh, adept to certain emotions. We all have what's called an emotional home. So emotions can raise your cortisol. Certain foods can raise your cortisol levels. Alcohol can raise your cortisol levels. These are all prime examples. Sugar can raise your cortisol levels in, in certain, certain instances. Okay, things that can lower your cortisol levels. Sleep, proper and deep quality sleep. Hydration, making sure your body is, is hydrated. I should say on the flip side of that, then dehydration raises your cortisol levels as well. And let me just pause there for the cause. Let's pause for the cause for a second and say this increase in cortisol, what it's really going to do is cause inflammation in the body. And... And what happens is your body goes into this mode of needing to fight the inflammation. Um, inflammation happens as a protective mechanism, but this can take many different forms. It can be water retention, it can be fat storage, it could be just literally inflamed joints around the joints. If you notice that you have more soreness or, or, or joint soreness or even injuries are more prone. This is, really, this is really what we're working with. It's a demon of a hormone, but it's very, it's very essential for us as well. So things that can lower your cortisol is sleep, stretching and yoga, meditation, Meditation creates a calm, peaceful state, and it lowers cortisol, increases the other positive hormones. Um, good feelings. So music can actually uh, indirectly reduce cortisol because it's going to produce certain emotional states. So being very conscious of your emotional states and, and managing that through music or movement or getting outside. Uh, so getting in nature can produce these, these good hormones to counteract the cortisol. Um, working out in, in, in forms can, can help that, that flow to reduce cortisol as well. So these are, there, there's, these are all small examples. There are more. 
here's what I want to point out. There is such a thing as overtraining, but instead of saying overtraining, we're going to reframe that and call it under recovering. That's really what you're doing. It's very, very hard to overtrain. What you're really doing is just under recovering. So what this means is at a time like now, when stress levels, um, the pace of life is go, go, go. It's very fast. Stress levels seem to go up during this time. Sleep levels seem to go down during this time. Stretching, you may be, may be avoiding your stretching routine or your normal routine of peaceful morning, meditation, yoga, all the things that create a well-balanced life. You may be avoiding those things. What this means then is maybe that's unavoidable. Maybe you have to work a lot right now. Maybe your family needs you a lot more right now. And maybe you just can't get that full rested eight hours of sleep or you can't get every single stretching session in. So if that's the case, if that's you, then you need to then, you need to then transition that into a different area where you can mitigate that, where you can bring that cortisol back down. And what that looks like is tapering back your training intensity, maybe increasing your caloric intake, or at, at the very least, adding in a lot more fruits and vegetables, colorful, uh, filled with antioxidants, uh, fruits and vegetables. Um, and so you're dancing between these two. If you are not able to recover properly, you should not be going balls to wall. You should accommodate that by changing your approach to training. What happens though is this. We think that we have this uh, necessity to go hard all the time. And we're gonna go hard, we're gonna go hard, and even though we can't stretch, and even though we can't meditate, and even though we can't sleep well, and even though we're just going quickly through everything and we're stacked up here, we're stacked in here, and we're stacked down here in the body, um, we, we don't change the approach to training. Here's what happens. Stress levels go through the roof. You start consuming more caffeine to keep up with the pace, which increases cortisol even more. You're still trying to do your deficit because God forbid you're on this diet and you need to meet that goal. So you're still on that deficit. So your body's gonna say, whoa, shocker. I, I need to lower my metabolic rate because this woman or this man is gonna kill me and I, I can't die. So I need to lower my metabolic rate so I can store these things as fat because fat equals energy. I'm gonna store it as fat and, um, and I don't even know what's going on right now. I'm in fight or flight mode. So sleep is out the door. You see how this can create a problem. So in order to get to the next level, whether you're already at a high level and you want to go to the next one when you're experiencing a plateau, you're not understanding it. I want everybody to just take one big giant step back, take one big pause and take about five or six big breaths through the diaphragm, up through the chest and back out again and do an honest assessment of your life and just ask yourself, where am I? Check in with your body and say, where am I stress-wise? Because this is all you're really doing in the end anyways, is moderating and managing your stress as it pertains to your training level, your lifestyle and rest level, and making sure those two are in line. If you're finding yourself consistently exhausted, consistently extremely sore, um, consistently getting injured, consistently dehydrated or tired or getting sick or feeling under the weather. These are all huge red flags that we, that we are too high on the stress level and too low on the recovery level. Huge red flags. Here's the opportunity moment. We have many different variables at play in this game of cortisol management. We can, we can either increase our recovery to match the, tra the training intensity that we desire and that we're capable of, or we can lower the training intensity to match the stress management habits that we're able to do right now at this point in time or at this point in our life. Plateaus happen because calories in are not, are 
calories in are higher than or matching the calories out. It's much more easy to manage the calor the the output as it pertains to your metabolism if we know where your cortisol levels are and only you know this really you can feel stress in your body you can feel it in certain areas so my advice for all of us during this crazy holiday coronavirus time is to slow down a little bit and let's use this as an opportunity to implement more wellness behaviors like meditation like yoga like sleep lo and behold like breathing breathing is another tool that we can use to lower our stress and really starting to implement all these throughout a day-to-day -day basis so that we can have a bigger capacity to hold more space inside of us more space inside of us allows us to grow uh, physically is what i'm talking about here but also spiritually and mentally and emotionally and all of that stuff too. Uh, but if we're filled with cortisol, we have no space for that and we're, our bodies are going to break down. And so the answer is not always more. Sometimes the answer is less unless you can do more of the good things like the recovery things. This is how we find balance. This is how we find health. This is how we find consistent results. And, and, and I'll use myself as an example for you guys. You've seen my body come to the next level over this past year. And everyone's been asking me about nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. And honestly, my nutrition hasn't changed that much. It's just a, an awareness of my body and honoring where, where you are in any moment. If you didn't sleep well the night before, or if you have a lot of mental stress on your plate, then you need to do that honest assessment when you're walking into the gym and say, where am I? check in okay i need to just go through the motions today and, and pump blood into my body through my body and just going at about 80 70 80 percent get in get out and do the things if you had a killer night's rest a couple couple days of rest you feel rested you feel nourished you feel hydrated then by all means go in the gym and, and crush it full out and push yourself you know to to the limit but this changes day to day. And so you, you really got to get in tune. If you want to go to the next level, uh, me, myself, and any coach isn't going to be able to do what you can do in ever, any given, given moment. And that's doing the personal inventory and personal assessment to say, where am I? How do I need to approach this? And what do I need right now in order to feel better and less stretched? This is a very important topic. Hormones are the drivers of our body and our systems. So I thought it was very important to make this video. It's becoming a lot more clear for me that I need to do this in my own personal athletic endeavors. And also just with the conversations with my clients, with you guys, um, especially during this holiday time, I want to encourage everybody, do not stop. Do not take your foot off the gas. You just change the pace. This is how we win the race. It is a marathon, not a sprint. And I hope this information helps you. We'll be doing a little bit more discussions on um, different workout approaches as it pertains to hormones and, and nutrition as well. But now is the season to load up on all the colorful vegetables. And I'm talking all the colors of the rainbow, fruits, vegetables, Make sure you're getting your, you're hydrating well, you're resting well, you're honoring your body. This is not a race. It's the present moment. This is your vessel. You don't have to torture it. And so I encourage us all to greet ourselves with love, give ourselves what we need in any given moment, and only you know that. And if you need to change your workout schedule around that, then that's what you should be doing. So I love you. I hope this video helped you. And if you have any other topics that you want me to dive into on the fitness side, on the spiritual side, mental, emotional, whatever, please leave it in the comments or shoot me a DM. I'd love to dive into it with you guys. This is like a little mini series that I love to bring you and there's more to come. So have a great day and we'll talk to you guys soon.